cheery tone of the uh, memory module theme tune welcomes us back to another sunny September day and I hope you've had a lovely holiday. I've decided to turn my can, uh, camera off for this video because uh, I'm having a bit of a bad hair day. Okay, so we've already studied one model of memory, the uh, multi-store model, a very a uh, very old one and uh, possibly one of the most important because of all the research that it generated and um, the next thing we have to do now is look at another model uh, that's an alternative to it so we'll be comparing this model to uh, the multi-store and, and looking for improvements or anything that may be maybe problems with this new model okay so the first so what you need to know by the end of this video is how the model works the names of the components or the parts um, and I want you also to be starting to think about the uh, uh, about the differences between this and the multi-store. Uh, and don't forget, you've got your little quiz that you need to, to answer at the end of this. OK, so off we go. Uh, so as I've said, we're looking to see how this is an improvement on the multi-store and uh, are there any weaknesses compared to it? Two British guys, Badley and Hitch, came up with this model in 1974. And if you remember the multi-store, we simply had one box for short-term memory. And uh, at the time, we criticised that and said that maybe not sim that's a bit too simple. Um, why do you think, if you were going to say it, why do you think uh, they said that the, the short-term memory is more than one store? I'll give you a clue. It's to do with encoding. If we use our short-term memory, we can remember pictures in short-term memory. We can remember sounds in short-term memory. So for Badley and Hitch, it made sense to talk about at least two different stores um, where those things are processed and encoded differently. They came up with this. They originally came up with a three-component module, but they added one later. So let's have a look at the first three, and I'll point out the final one. So they have a central executive um, which decides, so central executive is the part of us which decides whether we're going to use um, our phonological loop to process information or our visual spatial, spatial sketch pad. So if I sing a song to you, you're going to use your uh, phonological loop because that acts like a, an inner voice and an inner ear um, to, to remember that information. However, if I showed you a picture or described something from a it described a, a route to you, for example, you would use your visual spatial, spatial sketch pad, which is like a uh, an inner eye. So we've got uh, one part of short term memory dealing with uh, sounds and another part of short term memory, memory, another component uh, dealing with uh, spatial uh, and visual images. Uh, Badly later added, added what he called an episodic buffer. Uh, and that last part is a general store where it holds information shortly. So if you've just seen a car accident, you might remember the sights and the sounds and, and everything else as a general memory. Um, and so it brings all those things together for a short period of time. OK, let's look at each of the individual parts in more detail. Central executive is like attention. So if you uh, swing your attention from one thing to another, um, and then it decides once uh, so information is coming in that, that, that you want to process. You decide whether you're going to be using your phonological loop or your visual spatial sketch pad to process that. It's got very limited capacity and can't do, uh, can't attend to too many things at once. So if I say to you, for example, raise your hand, what would that have to do with the central executive? You'd be looking at me, you'd be thinking, uh, and you'd be you'd be listening. So your central executive would decide that you've got some some sounds coming in, and your central executive would use your uh, phonological loop to deal with those sounds and to process them, and then you would respond. I can't actually see whether you've got your hand raised or not, but that's your choice. Now the phonological loop is another part of. Uh, uh, working memory that's got limited capacity and it deals with auditory information sounds and it preserves the order of information um, 
and it's called a loop because the information goes round and round. If I oh my god, I don't believe this. Hello, this is my son Joe. I'll ring you back in five minutes, Joe. Uh, this one that should make this uh, video easy to remember. Okay, so uh, it's called a loop because information goes round and round. So, for example, if I give you a phone number to remember, you will uh, remember those numbers in order, and then you will also repeat them uh, to help you remember. As is verbal rehearsal, as we called it in the short-term memory in the short in the multi-store model. Okay, so um, there are two ways that you can use your phonological loop. And, um, and so what Badley and uh, Hitch did was they divided this loop into two parts. Um, so you might, so, and the two parts are to do with either preparing to say something. So we say something inside um, before uh, we rehearse it before we uh, say it out loud. That's one way of using the loop. And another way of using the loop is listening to stuff and using the loop to understand what has been said and to make sense of it. So we may want to say if, we, uh, if we're trying to end a relationship, we, we might want to say uh, it's not, uh, not you, it's me. Classic good old way of getting out of a relationship. But you need to practice that because what if it came out of with it's not me it's you that would be slightly embarrassing and not really uh, all that sensitive uh, so that's what that's how you would use uh, one part and then the other part would be would be to put words in order so if i said to you that the tree fell out of the bird you would use your uh, loop to try and uh, figure out what whether this made sense or not so that is that there's two parts to the loop the phonological store and the articulatory process. So the phonological store holds the words that you hear and it's like an inner ear. So uh, that's one uh, one part of the phonological loop and uh, the other one is the articulatory process and it's used for words that are seen. So if you're reading to yourself you would use the articulatory process or if you're about to say something you would silently repeat them before they came out. So if we think of uh, if we think of these components, we could say that the phonological store is like an inner ear, the articulatory process like an inner voice, and as we uh, as we're using that uh, comparison, um, we could also use the um, we can talk about the visual spatial sketch pad in a minute. Uh, the phonological loop is used when we're learning new words, and uh, the phonological store holds auditory data, so it holds stuff in the form of sounds. That's what I was about to say. The visual spatial sketch pad uh, stores uh, pictures and spatial in information. Um, so if, uh, information about what things look like and the relationship between things. So if I ask you to close your eyes and think about your front door, you can get a picture of what your front door looks like. Or if I asked you how far it is uh, between the sixth form uh, building and the maths block, you would uh, be able to give me a rough idea by using your visual spatial sketch pad. So if you're planning, a, if you're planning a route, or you're planning any other kind of visual visual task, that is the part that you use, and it's often described as an inner eye. So you might want to think, how would your visual spatial sketch pad help you get around your house in the dark? Okay, so let's go back to that for a moment and just say this. So don't forget, you need to be able to describe what the different parts of the working memory model are. And uh, hopefully you'll be starting to think about the differences between this model and the multi-store. Thank you for listening. I hope to uh, be able to see you soon with, uh, by using the camera for the next video. But I'm having problems. But that's enough of my issues. Oh, sorry, theme music.